So this is an explanation of something called the business cycle. And I guess the business cycle shows what we typically describe as the booms and busts of the business cycle um, and how the economy works. One of the big ideas is, is that over time we can show you know, countries kind of go towards this idea of long-term growth that follows a trend, and we call this kind of idea potential GDP. But sometimes economies operate at a point that's either below the potential, which is here, or for a short period of time they go above the line, what we kind of talk about as being maybe unsustainable period of growth, and then leads to a bit of a bust down into things we call recessions, troughs sometimes, depressions, and eventually this idea of uh, an economic recovery. So this phase is the ups and downs. It's something we call the business cycle. And all across in different parts of the business cycle, we can call them different bits. So here is uh, kind of a bottom of one of the cycles. And as we start to go up, we call this a period of um, of expansionary economic growth. On the top, typically call this a peak of economic growth or maybe a boom. So expansion is the idea of going up this way, peak, coming into a period of um, a contraction of economic growth. And then the idea of a trough and then eventually this, this concept of a recovery. And this is kind of just a language to explain uh, the phases of the business cycle. I sometimes call this, instead of the potential GDP, it's the, it's the actual GDP of the country. Um, and along in different times, you have the three important variables that change, and the three important variables are these things. Unemployment, economic growth itself, and also economic growth and also inflation. Inflation being the changes in the price levels. So for instance, in a period of expansion, we expect that the economy is growing and going upwards. When that's happening, employment is falling. As we kind of climb up towards this peak, we tend to get a pressure on prices to do with the idea of scarcity. So this is inflationary pressure as we reach a peak. This is the highest point of growth. It's also probably the lowest point of unemployment, but then the highest inflation. Coming down into a period of contractionary, contraction growth is perhaps declining, so we expect maybe a negative growth as we get below the curve. Unemployment starts to rise the further we get down. Um, less inflationary pressures, and so less inflation we sometimes call either perhaps disinflation, mm. where the rate of inflation is less than the previous year, or even deflation in the bottom of a trough. Um, and recovery is when unemployment starts to improve again. The way that I like to explain this as well is the reasons for this. So the reason that we get over, a, we increase over our potential is linking back to the idea of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So if you think back to aggregate demand and aggregate supply, just to have a simple graph down here, so aggregate demand, this is what we call a short run, AS, and an aggregate demand curve, price levels on the side. And for illustration's sake, I'm just going to do another one over this side. This is called real GDP, down the bottom. Down the side. And both of these are called what's called short-run equilibriums. If, for instance, the economy is operating at a point which is, if I draw its potential here and label this as Y, P down the side, if, a, if economy is operating above its potential we say, I can shade it here, this is called an inflationary gap. Inflationary gap being the idea that we're short run AS, 
equals aggregate demand, this point is greater than the long run aggregate supply, which is this blue curve here. And that doesn't equal. And we can say that this equilibrium is known as an inflationary gap, generally caused by an increase in aggregate demand to start with, which links up to this idea up here. And we call this the inflationary gap. When the country is, is in it for a period of time is beyond its potential and it's generally unsustainable. I mean, workers can work longer hours, they can get paid overtime, factories can work at 100% capacity. Eventually they do need to work stop for maintenance, workers need to take holidays and it's, uh, it's unsustainable for the economy to stay at that point. The other one is called, you can guess where this is going, the opposite of an inflationary gap, often called a deflationary gap. Or a recessionary gap. And illustrating down here, it's the opposite. So it's when the economy is operating at a point that's below its potential. So if I grab a go back to the blue pen and draw a curve in here, if this is the potential output of the economy in the blue, something called long aggregate supply, if the equilibrium is here, This price, at this price level, this is the same idea. Some people aren't working, some bits of land are being underutilized, and there's less pressure on the price level, and the price level will tend to fall. So this recessionary gap links up to, got another arrow, up to this idea up here, inflationary gaps link up to the concept up there. Finally, if we're at a point, from a nice big circle here, if we're at a point where the actual GDP is the same as the potential GDP, that is when all the curves are together. So you have neither an inflationary or recessionary gap. And that's a diagram that would look like this. We have our curves intersecting all the same point. And this point in the middle that would be the same idea as this equilibrium here. This diagram here with the, if this is your long run AS, AD, short run aggregate supply, this is also known as what's called the long run macroeconomic equilibrium. And the economy will tend to go back to this point from a variety of reasons, but that's a different lesson. Okay, I thought that was, um, so I hope that was useful. Does recap a lot of ideas, but together these are the foundations of um, macroeconomics.